missed most is the way, you know, things are happening now in Cayman. Like when we were growing up, we didn't hear about any teenagers or younger people dying from car accidents or getting involved with drugs or so forth. But right now it's, it's pathetic to think of things like that that are happening now. And as they say, it goes with progress, but you know, it's very disheartening. I don't like to see that. And another thing is like, um, I think they could do more. Now that we're advanced, I think they could do more for the younger kids that are coming up. We need a vocational school, something like that, you know, that because there are not many people, or I must say not everyone, is keen on getting an education, you know, like academical or so, but vocationally there are lots of children out there. Now, when we were growing up, we didn't have that. So we made the best of what we could, you know, but those two things I think I'd really like to see. But otherwise, um, I, you know, I wouldn't like to go back, as they say, like the washboard and all like that. I, you know, cause as I was telling you about my friend before she, uh, that wouldn't be good for older people because older people have aches and pains, right. so those things, you know. So progress is good too, but then again, you know, you have to look at it in different ways. The number one thing that I think I would have missed most is the close family knit that, that, that we had because once I got out of and started going to university or college, um, the whole family structure then um, somewhat changed because, and then by then, um, everybody was going in different directions. So there was not a close knit with my brothers, even though two of them had gone to sea, but when they came home, they came home. They didn't go and live someplace else, they came and they lived with us where we were. Um, so there was that closeness that really was, was the, one of the biggest things that, that I know is closeness with my, my parents, closeness with my, um, my siblings, and also with family and friends within the neighborhood. Because we, um, and that, that, was, that was one of the key things there. Um, the, the, the other thing is that, that I would think that, that I missed Oh, the awesome cooking. Of course, that almost goes back into the same family. Because my mother was a dynamic cook. My father was a dynamic cook. They both cooked extremely well. Um, because my father before, um, used, he used to, well, his occupation, he was a chef. And he was a chef on, on, on um, the Marin's boat. The you know, Marin's had the Morocco and the, this one and that one. He was one of the chefs. There. But prior to that, he was in the, in the war um, when they had the, the young people, the Caymanians in Trinidad during that war. We, the Caymanian persons represented um, the United Kingdom or the England in that war as members of their contingents. And my father was a cook for those people over there as well when he was in Trinidad in the Navy. So both mother and father were Real good cooks. They, they could bake things, and when you lick your finger, you can, you can just taste it before you, your finger even touches your lips. Um, how good it was. Fruit cakes, my father was a master at making fruit cakes. So, those are things that I, that I, that I remember uh, and, 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 and cherish. Just saying, like I'm growing up also, um, in, in the time I am, um, I was in, um, involved with the scout movement also, you know, yeah. Came with Junior Scout Mass, you know. Right. You know, and we had to play Dobson Hall. So that's right next door to the old Fort Dana, you know. Yeah. And, and we, you were a um, Sunday school teacher? I was Jack I guess everything I was doing was involved Sunday school teacher. I sang on the choir and everything else, you know, quite involved. I've also always been involved in the church. I mean, from my early childhood, you know, so I, I am still involved in the church right now. That was part of family life. It's family life, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that was wonderful. But on the whole, growing up in Cayman, you know, I really, really have enjoyed 
my time here on earth and it's right there, living here in the Cayman Island. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'll change it to anywhere else. No matter where I go, it's no place like home to me here. I mean, it's so relaxing. And you know, I mean, we do have a crime, but it's, it's not a minimum, you know, you can walk away, you feel free still. You don't have to look behind you that someone's going to stab you or do something or rob you to get it. You feel safe. I think that's, a, yeah. that's yeah. a wonderful note to finish yeah, on. Yeah. That it's great to be in Cayman. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> and going to Sunday school, it was, it was a muck, you know. It yeah. was a muck. You had to go to Sunday school. Yeah. You wouldn't see that. I don't want to go to Sunday school. I don't. No excuses. Matter. No excuses. You had to go to Sunday school. Oh, and one other thing before we went, you know, we we were with my grandparents for a while, and you know, every morning, my grandmother, before anyone leave the house, prayer. Mm -hmm. And even after I left, and we were living living down out from there, I used to go back there on the morning to prayer with my grandmother. That that was the morning. And also one thing, you know, that we, we had, the family was more united together because like for lunchtime, the family got together and sat at the table. Father was mostly home and he, there blessed the table and everything. But we always family together. Now what happens is everybody gets somewhere, you go and take your plate, you go take your plate, eat whenever you feel like. We don't have that, that love, that, I mean, that togetherness that we, we shared before. That's something yeah. that we miss. We miss a whole mm. lot. Well, I uh, remember my, my first daughter, well, an elder daughter. She lived right across the road here. Her front door looking at my front door. No. And we were, we were, when we look outside, we saw this guy standing at the yard and said, can I help you? You see, I ain't waiting. I ain't waiting to pick up one and to go to the movies. I was, what? <laughs> anyway, I didn't stop at one. I was a, a big woman then, and she was in her 20s. So, we didn't put, we didn't put really our foot down and say, well, no, no. If that's what her attitude was, if that's what she wanted and make you happy, I will try to, I will try to live with that regardless. So I got her ready for the marriage and as good a wedding as you could furnish in them times. And she got married. My, I got two daughters, my younger one was the same. She wasn't, let's see, she wasn't, she wasn't actually living with me at the time. She was living out. She had went to university and, uh, well, this guy got in with her and that caught up while they went to the university. And anyway, I did the same for her as I'd done one day. I prepared her for marriage. Okay, well, I think that we're gonna stop it here. Um, and like I said, I would love to come back at another time. Thank you so much for today's interview. It wasn't my snacks, no. so it was no snacks like how you see going now, none of that. When you're going to school, you had your bread and maybe a little bit of butter or something on it. And, and when you're going to school, you find a lot of almonds. They used to be sweet and we call those things, those um, coca plum, not coca plum. I think it's coca plum. Yeah, with the white and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And coca plum, yeah. yeah. 
And the so sea, we, the sea tastes like coconuts. Uh, yes, so it's yes. So we used to take them and break them and eat because the, the, the meat on it, it but I say the meat on it is good. I mean, you can find some that's sour too, but some good. But then we'd pound almond seeds, you know, and and um, tamarind. We would take tamarind, pick them out and put them in a, a um, bottle. Take sugar and put it on top. Take a little soda and put it in, soup it up, and it become like frother. Mm -hmm. And it was it's good, which you children don't do that these days. Well, the, the music people were just, people used to play guitars. Amazingly, most people could play, I wouldn't say most people play guitars, a lot would, could be able to play, I mean, the whole chords. And um, they had one they called Kojo. All, all the old and he played, a few of them would, would play guitar. And um, yeah, they, have, they have kitchen dance not from a dance hall, kitchen dance, somebody's house on the porch. And they use a guitar and a drum and a grater that make noise. And they played mostly love songs from way back, those, what we call them, not rock and roll guys, they were country and western singers. Well, that's Cayman Island was mostly used to that type, but they really used to play some thing and then they had these records that could break you know if you hit them they would break in those days and they had this big thing you could put them on and just wind it up and it, it plays okay but the guitar you could walk around with this guitar and and play a song but country and western or calypso so it wasn't no rock and roll quite then no 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 and we just play these country and western but as i start to go to see, my first trip that I was going to see, here was this rock and roll broke loose out in America. I had like that. So how did you hear these music? Where? Was it just at the house, at the house dance, or did I, you hear them other places? No, the house, that dance at that house was the only dance, and they don't have it all the time. I mean, they would, they had no clubs or nothing, no bars. They just had this, dance when they're going to have it. And they didn't notify everybody about it. It's just a big talk going around for the whole day. This man going to have a dance, dance, dance. Some girls don't get be able to go. Father is too strict. Or if he comes and stand there, maybe she get it. Um, and uh, that was one of the things, too, that I instilled in my two children, that all the people you respect them and to do good in school and all that they used to teach us, you know. But, um, and I tried to instill all them values into my two boys. And thank God they, they turned out good. Mm -hmm. What are the two things that you appreciate most about the way your parents raised you? I appreciate they, they raised me to to be good, be kind to people, and they, they, they appreciate me to, to be smart, be ambitious. That'll get you a long way, especially my father told me that. Ambition will get you a long way, and being honest with people, all that will take you a long way. What changes have you observed in the way parents raised, your parents raised you, and how you see kids are being raised today? Well, like I, I, I went ahead down and seeing some of that, because what I see the kids doing now wasn't how we was in those days. You no, know, they take their boyfriend or, and they'll go driving and go on the beach with them and they'll do only God knows what it does but they go out with them and they will bring them home and if they leave to them they will sleep right right there with them too but and like when you know some of them will 
how big it is. So, and these are the ones that you can't tell. Don't care what you try to tell them. You came from the old school, so your advice is no good to them no more. No. Had no, we never had the slightest idea of anything happening. All but now, when the war started and all like that, we knew that it was a war. I mean, that was something going on. How? Well, when when I was going to school at the time, I think I was around about uh, 13, 14, 20, something like that, during the war, and uh, I was going to school, and I can remember playing, because I got beaten one time, and the teacher beat me for, but anyway. One time it was a helicopter, not a helicopter, a blimp. That was the first time that we were going to see a blimp and then it come to the island or any kind of plane. So it was coming up through the street, you know, falling the street right up and low down. And at the time was, the teacher uh, told us, he let out of school, you know. So we all went out on the street to watch this blimp. So me and another guy, we picked up a rock and started fling, uh, fling out the up at it and see, the teacher saw it. When school called, he gave, he gave both of us a good beating. I always remember that. <laughs> so what was, the, what was the blimp doing? Was it sending a message? Just, no, no, just, just passing through, just, just passing through. What, what nationality was the blimp? In, um, uh, American. Because if it was German, you were... You were oh, <laughs> was in trouble. <laughs> so yeah. How did you communicate with relatives who were abroad? Well, we would have one system of that, and that was whenever we had a mail boat, used to, a boat just run between Jamaica here and Grand Cayman. And uh, she would take, probably, because she was very slow, she would take about two and a half days from here, Jamaica, two days, better. So that's how the mail used to go. And the past, anybody want to go to Jamaica, anybody was sick, because we had no doctor at that time, no doctor. We just had an old dispenser from Jamaica by the name of Lawrence, Mr. Lawrence. And uh, he used to do what he could with, you know, the medicine and stuff, but there was no operation going on. If anybody was sick, they had appendix, you had to, Punish with it or die or go to Jamaica or that was it. No way out. That's what the only way out. And then if the boat if the boat wasn't wasn't here at the time, probably be, the boat would be four or five days or six days before it would come and all like that. So it was it was really uh, those days was rough. It was rough. Okay. Let's talk about leisure time. What were some of the most fun things or your favorite thing to do to pass time when you were growing up? Well, my best Favorite time was, like I said, playing, playing, playing games and uh, and swimming and all like that. That, that was my favorite. I, I love that. Did you? What other? watched this country develop and been involved in its development from the time I was a child growing up and right on down through the years to the present day. And that's why one of the resources, and this is, you asked what the other thing that I think that we miss in the Cayman community, is the involvement of the seniors in the Cayman community. When I was growing up and when I was raising my children, the seniors in the Cayman community enjoyed a special status. We didn't do tea parties for them, we do that, but they were a source of information. They were a source of advice. They were, they were what I call the pillars of the community, you know. Um, we have developed a, a, a something in this island that kind of it worries me. Where at 60 or 65, we retire. And Lord, we retire from life. You know, and 
and I like to do my little scripture on this. That word is not in the Bible. There's no such thing as retirement in the Bible. Everybody born and they worked and then they and they lived and they died. They did. There's no retirement in it. And the older people worked to the last day of their lives. They just kept going. Nobody told them that they were, could retire or they were going to sit down and they were going to do nothing. And in our community today, it's a resource an untapped resource of knowledge and of support. Every school in this island should have a group of what we call grandparents that go to the school and talk to the children or just sit in the classroom and as an, as an extra pair of eyes for some teacher. That should, that should be a part of every school. My, my little great-granddaughter goes to school and her mother is required to come in two days a week. And this is a public school. She's required to come in two days a week and help. Whether she reads for the children, whether she assists in the classroom, whether she helps them with art, whatever, whatever it is. We don't bring, we don't, we don't utilize this source in our community. And so when people go home, we find that they sort of drop out of the churches. They're not, they're not, their involvement becomes sporadic. Their involvement in the community becomes sporadic. Do you know how hard it is to hold? I tell you this, it, to, I, I pay a compliment to my committee every chance I get because they are the most faithful people over 18 years of running this project that I have ever seen. We meet every Tuesday night religiously. We meet on weekends. We come up here whenever it's necessary and we clean up everything. We're always involved. I don't, I, any member of them could walk in that door and I could say take over and they could give you a walking tour of this building or of this property, not just the building. It is because we have worked together so closely and we have shared the knowledge. And like I said, they're all older people. But it's an untapped source in the Cayman community. And, it's, and it is the first time in our history that the seniors, like I said, we do this older month thing in which we have tea parties and we honor them and we do this and we do that. But this is the first time in the community where they're not participating in the building up of the community. They are being sidelined because they're old fashioned or they have different views, nobody wants to listen to what they have to say, whatever it might be, we don't use them. You're doing this now, and it's going to go to the archives, and it's going to join all the files in the archives of people who have done this. And it'll be available there for somebody who might want to do some research. I don't know how many people do research on, on us as a people, but it will be available there for that. But it's not going to be out there for the public. Well, we have to change that. We have to change that. But you know, you know, it should be out there for the Cayman public. It should be out there for the, the, the children to see and hear. After I became speaker, I went back to the um, school, to the, um, what was then the George Hicks campus, to do reading day, because I'd been teaching there. And I chose a story that was in the Observer. Of a, uh, it was an interview with a man from West Bay who had been on, on the, in, uh, uh, gone to sea when he was 12 years old as a cook on one of the Turtland boats. And it got caught in the hurricane. That story of Andrew Powery? It got caught in the hurricane when Roy Bodden's father-in-law, he actually is was he got caught in the hurricane and they sheltered they turned they, they when the 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 radium came along to pick, to pick them up they actually went on board and when they when the crew said no they were not going to stay with that ship they were going to go back and try to shelter themselves on the little key they were on this little boy had to get the captain's permission to go with them and they turned their boats upside down and sheltered under those boats. 
to let hurricane pass and they were stranded they, there for over a week without any food or anything else. And I started it off by saying to all of those children, ask them how old they were. And most of them were in his age bracket, 12, 13, 14. He came back, his father died while he was away, and he came back to be the man of the family. Um, and I asked them what they had done the day before and what they were doing that day. I knew they were playing video games and they were doing this and doing that. And then I told the story of what life was like for that young boy, that young man. Child, actually. And then I asked them, I said, do you have older people in West Bay? Yes, ma'am. Do you talk to them? And there's a silence. I said, um, well, don't you see them? Like they sit on their porch sometimes? Yes, ma'am. You don't talk to them? No, ma'am. Um, finally, one little boy put his hand up. He said, um, ma'am, I talked to my grandfather. I said, and what does he tell you? He says, if I tell you these children's going to laugh at me. But that got the conversation going. Because all of those children at some time or they had come in contact with an older person, not at their school, just casually seeing them because you don't visit each other houses now like you used to do before. You know, everybody's glued to a television set or some kind of electronic instrument. So you don't visit like you used to do before. When we visited, when I visited my children, my children had to sit quietly while I talked to the adults in the room. <laughs> but they, they soaked it all up.